Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today, guys, I'm gonna give you guys my half corner reaction, guys. We have two insane games, late drama in both games, and we're gonna start first with this one. So, of course, you guys know it's me, 80s from four. You guys know I cover the half corner on a daily basis. I take the time out of my life to watch all the games, and here we have for this game, man, Equatorial Guinea versus Guinea. Wow. I think if you're um Equatorial Guinean, man, you must be feeling devastated after conceding the last minute of the game. Let's discuss this game, right? Because this game, for most of the game, was pretty awful. In terms of quality, both teams didn't get a single shot on target in the first half, as you can see right here. I would say a, a Guinea were the better team, though. They did. I believe they had a goal disallowed in the first half, I believe. Um, I believe it's the right decision. I believe it was offside. Uh, let me actually check here in the, the events. Uh, let me see in the ticker. That It will probably say in the ticker. Where is this in the ticker? It doesn't show here. Let me just see. I, I believe there was a goal disallowed in the first half. I... I uh, I'm trying to remember if there was. I believe there was. I think it was. Yeah, let me just check right here. Yeah. Well, hold up, hold up. Yeah, where was the disallowed goal? I'm pretty sure there was a disallowed goal, guys. It doesn't say here for some reason. Maybe. Yeah, I think it might be the 20th minute, guys. It might. No, that's not for actual guinea, though. It's, uh, I don't remember. Whatever the case is, man. There was a. I'm pretty sure it was a disallowed goal. Then we get to the red card situation. The red card. And for me, the red card is what completely changed the game. And for me, this guy, Bicario, was stupid. He basically did a karate chop. To basically illustrate, he basically kicked the guy like this straight in, lunged in with his kick. And that's definitely a red. I mean, it, it, straight red, right decision. And you could see how this really destroyed Ecuador Guinea because now they had no CDM. Now they had to be more defensive. Their attack is now more limited. You know, and then that there's that. And then comes the big decision. Of course, the penalty. The penalty that was given. And for me, it was the right decision. Penalty was the right decision there. Um, I believe, when was the penalty given, taken? Uh, but yeah, let me see if I can find here. Yeah, in the 47. No, it wasn't the 47. When was the penalty? Uh, right here. At the 69th minute, Nues, Nuse, Nue comes up, steps up the stop. And I believe one of the center backs for Guinea gave away the penalty. I think it was Diakabi. I think it was Diakabi. I think he gave away the penalty. Yeah, let me see. No, he didn't give away the penalty. Who gave away the penalty? It was one of the center backs. Let me see. Maybe it was a midfield. Kanate. Kanate did give away the penalty. Who gave away the penalty? I could have sworn someone gave away. Uh, let me see. Who gave away the penalty? I don't remember who gave away the penalty. Anyways, someone gave away a penalty from Guinea. Very, very clumsy challenge. Nui steps up and he misses the penalty. And from that point on, I knew it was over. Because from that point on, Guinea were gathering momentum. They were gathering momentum, as you can see right here, guys. They had their chances. Um, 86 minutes, they had an attempt save. Um, and then obviously the 90, uh, we'll get to the goal. Then 86th, um, 83rd, Garassi had a chance at 82nd. And then obviously, in um, you know what's really interesting, though? Why was Gurasi and Nabi Keita not starting? These were like two of their most famous players. They were not starting. I guess they were not fully fit. And then someone, man, Diakati, man, makes a brilliant pass for Baro and Bio, and he scores a brilliant header in the 98th minute of the game to break Equatorial Guinea hearts and to make it 1 0 and to put Guinea into the quarterfinals app. And I predicted this, guys. If you guys don't believe me, check my predictions video. I said that Guinea would win 1 0. I said that Equatorial Guinea for me, they're a good team. But I feel like for extra Guinea to work, they need they need to play against a team that gives them so much space. Guinea doesn't really give you a lot of space, which is the reason why I said Guinea will win, because I just have a feeling that Guinea is just going to pull this through. Defensively, they're solid, and I feel like Guinea is a team to look out for. So Guinea is now in the quarterfinals. They will be playing against Dior Congo. We'll get, we'll get to them in a bit. And that's a very open. That's a great matchup. That's a great matchup because we're guaranteed to see a team. We're guaranteed to see either. We're guaranteed to see an underdog in the semifinals. So for dear, for extra guinea man, you gotta hold yourselves, and it's just a shame that I think that penalty miss is what lost in this game because if that penalty wasn't missed, who knows? Maybe they could have had a different game. They would have been able to see out the game one nil. But you could just see that that penalty was so, it was so unlucky. Hit the post, man. I felt so bad for Newey because obviously um, he's a top scorer in Afcon right now with five goals. So. Very, very unfortunate. And, you know, this is why I love about this uh, this AFCON is that this is upset. Because many of us said coming into this game, the extra Guinea were the heavy favorites, that they would beat them, they came top of the group. But this is what I love about this tournament is that it doesn't matter about what you... It's, it's just about winning. You know, I, Guinea for me, man, they won this. And so, shout out to Guinea, man. Shout out to Guinea, man. Huge, huge win, man. Egypt versus DR Congo, man. Um, I got to say this right now, guys. Egypt looks terrible. 
I didn't th I didn't think Egypt was great. And there is this re rhetoric and this narrative that oh Egypt played better without Salah. I knew that was false. Okay, because let's be real, guys. In the group stage, they weren't really challenged. Like let's be real, Ghana were abysmal. We we just established that. Mozambique aren't really that great. And Cape Verde, you know, I mean they're good. Okay, we have to give respect to Cape Verde. Obviously, Cape Verde was fantastic, but let's be real. Egypt, for me, I could I didn't really read too much into that because DR Congo is a respectable team. This, DR Congo is a good team, guys. We saw what they did in the group stage. So I do think DR Congo is considerably better than obviously um Mozambique and Ghana. Okay. And so I feel like for me, it just showed on the day because Egypt for me in the first half, they, they weren't great. They weren't that great, you know. And I just feel like for me, they were just uh, very, very underwhelming. I thought I expected more from them. But you can see right here, guys, they only had one shot on target, which was the penalty. We talk about the goal that DR Congo scored. Very, very good goal there. Great, great build-up play there. Um, I believe, uh, who got the assist there for the goal? It was a bit of a scrappy goal, to be fair. A bit of a scrappy goal. Uh, great combination of them. We still got the play, and then Ilya scores a header there to make a 1-0. And the Egypt gets a very, very soft penalty. For me, this penalty was very harsh. I believe Mbaba gave away the penalty. A very, very harsh. No, it's not. Badabuski gave away the penalty. Very, very harsh decision, in my opinion. I don't think it should have been a penalty. And up stop, Mustafa Mohammed, and he scores the penalty to make it 1-1. The second half, man, Egypt were so bad. You can see right here, guys, they only had four shots, two on target the second half. They were not great. DR Congo, they were creating better chances. And then, obviously, they, they just missed. And I, I don't know how many times they have to keep saying this. Bakambu is a disgrace. I'm sorry. Bakambu cannot start for DR Congo anymore. I need Sebastian Deserbi. You need to stop starting Bakambu. Bakambu is gonna is a liability. I don't care what how I don't care what European club of course. I know he plays for Galatasaray. I know he's like one of the most famous players. This guy can't start. You have to give Banza the start because Banza for me showed more up in this game back Bakambu. But I mean, you can see he got a higher rating, you know. And then obviously, um, they just couldn't convert and. You know, you can see both teams are just having a, a trouble time finding the back of the net. Obviously, Dior Congo still having trouble finding the back of the net. Bakambu there. And you can see Egypt chances there. They weren't really that great. They had that chance for 61st a minute from Zizo. Um, and then obviously 63rd. Zizo I thought was decent. Atia, you know. And I thought it was really interesting that M Musta um, Omar Mursa didn't start this game. But I think he was. I think he wasn't completely fit for this game. And then the second half, man. Uh, first half of extra time, man. Egypt went a man down. Obviously, they had a red card. I believe that was in the... What minute was that? I think it was the... Uh, yeah, it was, it was right here. So, you can see right here, guys. 97th minute of the game. And you can see Egypt were extremely defensive. After going down after going out 10 men, they knew that, ah, we can't do this anymore. And for us to win, we needed this on penalties, right? In the second half, the same thing, too. Um, they were pretty defensive. Dior Congo had the better chances. Then it comes to penalties, man. This was a really long penalty shootout. A really, really long penalty shootout. One of the longest ones since seen. Dior Congo wins 8-7 penalties. Gabal should have saved some of those penalties, man. Especially because I believe a lot of those penalties, I think he dove left and a lot of the penalties were going right. You know? And then finally, you know what's crazy, guys? Mustafa Muhammad, the guy that scored the penalty and open play, couldn't score in the shootout. He missed in the shootout. And then Arthur Masoko missed. And then came down to the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper hits post, I believe. Gabal, and then the goalkeeper scored. So... For Dior Congo, man, shout out to Dior Congo, man. They're through to the quarterfinals. They eliminate one of the tournament favorites, Egypt. And the units are actually really funny, guys. Egypt haven't lost a game. They've tied all four of their games. Same goes for Dior Congo as well. So this is interesting, man. Mohamed Salah, this is another trophy he's lost, obviously. And um, it's 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 heartbreak, man. It's heartbreak, you know. And obviously, it's very, very unfortunate. So for Egypt, man, Rui Vittoria, man, I just knew that Egypt weren't gonna win this. I knew Egypt were gonna win the AFCON without Salah. It just felt like, it just felt something like, it just felt too perfect. It didn't feel realistic enough, you know. And I felt, and I said this before, guys, on other channels, that like, Egypt have had so many chances to win the AFCON in the past with Salah. Two finals, they made it. So, I feel like it's not going to happen. So, like I said, for Dero Congo, man, congratulations to them. And they got an intriguing matchup, man. Dero Congo, Guinea is going to be a very fascinating matchup. I and mean, you know what's crazy, guys? One of the two countries is going to be, one of them is going to be in the semifinal. That's going to be interesting. And guys, once again, man, the AFCON is undefeated. This tournament shows that any team can win it. There is no team to fear in this tournament. Any team can win it, guys. So shout out to Dior Congo, man. Congratulations to them in Egypt, man. I thought El Neni was good on the day. I thought Muhammad was good. I thought the center back partnership was good. But like I said with Egypt, man, the attack just wasn't good enough on the day. Trezeguet was just underwhelming. Fatih, uh, Fatih wasn't great. Um, 
And I just think it for me for Egypt, man, that just you can see this team really struggles with Salah. And I and I think this game evidently showed that this game they really do need Salah. Salah is that difference maker for the team. So shout out to DR Congo, man. I feel bad for Egypt. I feel bad for Salah in particular. And um, hey, they got another chance next year, man, with the AFCON coming up. So, anyways, I think I've spoken up for this video. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts, comments below, find based on any major target points. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.